welcome to part three of the RVF project. I'm Rob, welcome back to my subscribers and friends and also to the first time viewers. And here's what we're building, just a reminder, 98 Suzuka 8 hour winner RC45 of Sunichi Ito. This is the bike I'm aiming to build and race at the end of July at Donington Park. It's only a few more months left. Well, at the end of part two, you saw me trying to get the swinging arm in and now it's done. You may remember the swinging arm wouldn't fit in and we had to make a special tool to get it in this gap. So there's two ways of going about getting your swinging arm to fit a frame. You can engineer the swinging arm down or you can cut the frame out. And this is what I'm making here is a special little tool which is going to cut the frame mounting lugs down. I'm just facing off this, uh, this part of the tool now. And this is what I'm going to use to turn in the frame. Uh, this point here we're just going to mill down some slots to mount on this, uh, this area I'm milling down. We're going to mount on a, uh, a hardened tip which is going to be drilled through and screwed onto there, one on each, um, one on each side as it were, to basically cut down the aloe frame when it turns in the mounting. Here's the sketch I'm working from. A nice the basic tool made there and this is how it's basically going to work. Slot it in the frame and it's going to twist around and cut down. You see the mounting lug there, it's going to cut that down five millimetres on each side. Next thing we do is put some cutting tips on and that brassy colour thing is the cutting tip there and I'm just drilling it through so I can screw it on. Here it is fully assembled in the frame, there's the bit that I'm going to put the drill on and here's the cutting tool in the frame. The uh, red tube is going to be some cutting fluid basically. That red plastic bush is quite important to keep it uh, turning straight. All we do now is turn the coolant on, just a simple uh, gravity feed tank, connect on my drill and basically um, force it through really. All you, that's all I'm doing now is just cutting down the frame. Here you can see lots of lovely swarf and the two bra uh, not brass, it's rock hard carbide is uh, cutting the frame down. Done it on both sides, five mil on one side, five millimeters on the other, wide enough to get the wide enough to get the swinging arm in. Once I've done that, now I need to make a, a spacer to help get the swinging arm in exactly the right place. So I've oversized the frame, uh, the width. Now I'm just making a spacer. Here we are just boring out a large lump of steel, possibly a bit of a big lump of material to have in a having a Myford 7 without a without a steady, but I haven't got a steady yet, I'll get one later. But anyway, this is boring out the beginnings of the spacer. And uh, this is just finishing it off. Five minutes later, or five hours, just taking the spacer off and this is one of the spaces which will go into the swing arm. Got to make another one to uh, offset the front sprocket as well. So as you can see, the swing arm is in now and the shock absorber, luckily for me, was offset. I've got the spacer in there. Come and have a look at this spacer put in there to get the swing arm and the wheel in the right place. Also, the front sprocket has been modified to get the chain in a straight line. Have a look at the front end. Well, to get the big forks in, I have to fit them to the steering stem. Now, as you can see, the Aprilia steering stem is quite big compared to the Honda VFR stem. So, what I've got to do is make a VFR stem slightly different and put it into here. So, this needs to be pressed out, and a VFR stem replica needs to be pushed in so that going to work in my headstock. Also the forks themselves need a bit of work. Come and have a look at the forks. Now at the moment these are a standard Aprilia forks. They don't look like much like the RC45 forks which is where we have to do a bit of magic. The first thing, the bottom fork bottoms, we need to do treatment on these to make them look like magnesium which involves jet blasting and using special dyes and lacquers. The stanchions themselves, I will have to have these uh, nitride plated to give them that works factory look. And the fork tubes themselves, I'm going to do a special trick with those to make them look like they've been anodized in a sort of bronze gold colour. So that's it for now, thank you for joining me. Join me again in four weeks time and I will have the forks on, looking like the factory job, all the steering done as well. Hopefully I'm waiting for the bodywork to be delivered in the next couple of weeks when the bodywork arrives we can start lining that up as well. So see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.